At this point, we have discussed raw patterns and they help us to get to our final destination when that destination is external to CUCM. There are so many different combinations of phone numbers and CPRIs that it would be insane to have a raw pattern for each exact match. With wall cards, we can summarize the numbers we want to match so one raw pattern can match a number of different patterns. This helps us reduce the number of raw patterns that we need, especially when those raw patterns may have the same destination. In this nugget, we'll see how we can use wall cards for our raw patterns within CUCM. In this nugget, we talk about raw pattern wall cards. And the purpose behind these wall cards is to help summarize the numbers that we have within our dart plan. In the US, they say we have about 10 billion possible phone numbers. And that number may be higher due to the area codes that are added each year. So imagine building your dial plan where in order to dial 813-555-4000, you build a raw plan within CUCM that says when this number is dialed, go out the SIP trunk, which is this cube, out to the ITSP. Then you have to create another raw pattern, 555-4001, to go out the SIP trunk and to go out to the ITSP. Then you create a third pattern and you get the idea here. 4003, put one too many zeros there, and when this number is matched, go out the SIP trunk over to the ITSP. Your dial pan can get very large based on the route patterns that you need to add. Just to give you an idea, we can create one route pattern, A13555400 X, X being digits from 0 to 9, that will cover the range 4000 all the way to 4009. So this alone would cover 10 numbers that would match on this one raw pattern. So we can see from this one example alone how wild cards can benefit us by simplifying our dial plan and the number of raw patterns that are needed. Here are some of the wild cards that we can use and we'll start with the period. Now in CUCM, this period is a discard digit. Now this is different when we looked at iOS in the voice gateway in cubes, where the period was a digit zero through nine or the star. So what do we mean when we say this card digit? In many environments, we have to dial a number like a nine for an outside line to the PSTN. And I've seen this be six before, I've seen this be eight, but we'll stick with nine with our example. The PSTN does not care about that nine. So when we send the number over to the PSTN, we have to send it in the format of A13555-4000 or 1813555-4000, but either way, it does not want that 9. So within CUCM, within our route pattern, we can specify a discard of pre dot. So in our example here, the 9 would be dropped before the call went to the PSTN. If we did not drop that 9, this entire number, including the 9, would go out to the PSTN, and the PSTN would reject that call. Next, we have ETS. ETS are digits 0 through 9. So in this example here, it's 3690 through 3699. So this gives us 10 matches with this single pattern. We can also do 3 ETS 1 1. So this would be 3011. 3111. So I paused the video so I can write all this out, but this also gives us 10 possible matches. This second digit can be 0 through 9. Then we have this example of 3 x x. So the second digit could be 0 through 9, and the third digit could be 0 through 9. So here we have a hundred different matches with this single raw pattern, and you can have Many matches you can have 3337, 358, 385. I won't write all these out, but we can see the benefit here of having one raw pattern match in this case a hundred different possible matches instead of having 100 different raw patterns within our CUCM database. Next, we have the at, and the at is a macro that includes a series of patterns. And this series of patterns may represent the numbering plan for an entire country. For example, 9.at is the North American numbering plan. It includes 166 individual raw patterns that are added to the CUCM database. 
Now the drawback here is that this also includes 900 numbers, which we know cost money per minute and usually we do not want our users to be able to dial these numbers in our infrastructure. So we have to create route filters in order to restrict calling when we use this 9.at. Next we have the estimation point, which is one or more digits. And this is used quite commonly when it comes to international dialing. And the reason being when you dial different countries, the number of digits required may be different. For example, Germany may be 011 49 555 5555 and Japan may be 011 81 and if you're in Germany or in Japan, if I have that format wrong, I apologize. But the point or the takeaway is that each country may require a different amount of digits. So this 9.011 with the estimation point serves us well when it comes to our dial plan. Now you may ask, does CUCM know that we are done dialing this number? And the answer is CUCM by default has this T302 timer. And by default, when you install CUCM, it's 15 seconds. So once Bob here presses his last digit, CUCM waits 15 seconds for any additional digits. Then we'll begin to process that call. Now, 15 seconds is a long time. Now, most people mentally, when they dial a different country, think it takes a long time. So they're more patient than dialing down the street or a local number. But 15 seconds may be too long and we can log into CUCM and change that setting from 15 to a lower setting, like maybe five or six. And we'll see where we can change that setting later. Next we have pound or hash, but this is the end of a dialing sequence. Now going back to our last example here, if someone wanted to dial an international call, by default, we would have to wait 15 seconds for that T02 timer to expire so CUCM could process that call. Or if we have a user that is savvy enough, they can actually dial that number and hit pound. If we remember in iOS, when we made a few test phone calls, we can dial a number and hit pound. So either the voice gateway or the queue can process that call immediately. So within CUCM pound, as we said, is also used for the end of dialing sequence or we're telling CUCM to stop digit collection but it's also part of the dialed number. So what do we mean by that? Let's say if the only route pattern we had for international calls was this one right here. So someone would dial their number and the remaining digits. And if they're savvy enough, they will hit pound and the call would never complete because we need a route pattern within the CUCM that also ends with pound because pound is also recognized as a digit. So it's part of the dialed number. Without this route pattern, when Bob dials his number and hits pound, CUCM goes, sorry, I don't have a pattern that matches that. So this is why we ever create a pattern. And if you want your users the ability to hit that pound button in order to process that call immediately, we need a same route pattern with the pound at the end. Again, this only applies to CUCM and not the iOS. Next, we have these brackets here for a range. So in our first example, we're saying that the number has to be three, five, one or two or five. So one five would match three, five, one, five or three, five, two, five. Anytime you see a bracket here in this instance, one, two, when you look at this, it's not the number 12. Mentally put an imaginary comma right there and we should read that as one or a two. So 3515 or 3525. Here we have a range of numbers. So we have 3515, 3525, and then 3535. Here we have a combination of numbers. So we're stating that it's either 1 or, remember, put your comma, 2 through 4. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, and a 9. So the numbers that would match here is 3515, 3525, 3535, 
3545 and finally 3595. So in this example where it's an included range, we can also have a excluded range. So we're matching a number that starts with 3 as the first digit, 5 as the second digit, and any number beside 1, 2, or 3 as the third digit, followed by 5. So this means 3505 5 would be a match. 3515 would not be a match, 25 would not be a match, and 35 would not be a match. But 3545 5, all the way through 3595 5 would be a match. So we can see here with wall cards, it can help us simplify our DAR plan. We can get very creative on what numbers to allow or not to allow, but it helps us limit the actual number of route patterns that we need. Sometimes I log into a CU SAM cluster and see a bunch of route patterns that are created and I think to myself, we could have consolidated those hundred into these two route patterns It made life a lot easier. So in this nugget, we looked at route pattern wild cards and we saw that the purpose was to summarize numbers in our dial plan to help us decrease the number of total patterns that we needed. We also saw some examples of using these wild cards and when we create our dial plan, we'll see how we can use those wild cards to create a DAO plan for our users to reach out to numbers out to the PSTN. I hope it's been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.